service made in the Valakin for that you may job you know to stay online job with no distractions, which is the mighty blood of Christ that put us in and believe. Amen. 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 We bless the Lord. We give God the glory for his love and his mercies. As I say, thank you so, so much for uh, being there for each other. Uh, the support we have been giving each other in prayer, uh, standing with one another, it is very, very much important. And as we celebrate Easter today, I want to just share with you a word that the Lord laid in my spirit. I was feeling, uh, yesterday I was in prayer and I was telling the Lord, uh, in the midst of the suffering that the world is going through, in the midst of what is happening, okay. Lord, I want to just share with you oh. a word that the Lord I've put in the, the, we are now live on, uh, on YouTube. We are now live on YouTube. Uh, that is why you had that background. Uh, so I was saying that as we continue to, to pray and as we continue to stand in the gap on behalf of many who are either sick uh, on behalf of many who are going through trying times because I was thinking about the many who have already lost their loved ones and on top of losing their loved ones they cannot even go uh, to the funeral and, and it's sad it is sad it is a sad state that we are in but through it all the Lord remains to be God praise the name of the Lord he remains to be God and we are going to overcome just like that song uh, that we have had that we are going to overcome we already overcame when Jesus went on the cross and he said it is finished we already overcame praise the name of the lord and today as as we prepare and as we celebrate easter as we talk about the resurrection of christ uh the lord led me to speak about uh someone i am calling before the glory before the glory we all like glory everybody likes glory we would all like to get into the glory moment but before we get to the glory moment there is something that comes before the glory just like it was uh, uh, shown in the life of Jesus before he went back to heaven and sat on the right side of uh, on the right hand of God and he experienced the glory of the father he had to go through something and this is what i am calling suffering praise the name of the lord because in as long as we are in this life suffering is inevitable it is part uh, i was reading somewhere and somebody said that suffering is part of humanity uh there is no way you can live from the day you were born to the day you die, maybe you die of old age, and you say that all your days have been bliss, all your days have been perfect, you have not gone through suffering. So suffering is a package that comes with the living. When you are alive, suffering will come. And I was reading a, a quote or something written by St. Augustine, and he said the difference between uh, uh, suffering and the result of suffering is not the suffering itself but the sufferer the people who suffer because what matters when you go through suffering is how you react to the suffering praise the name of the lord and I was reading in the book of Luke chapter 24 and verse 26. This is after Jesus has resurrected and he is walking with two disciples who are going to a mouse. And when he, and when he was walking with them, uh, he got to a place and asked, and asked them, what is this you're talking about? And these two disciples looked at him and said, are you the only uh, stranger in Jerusalem who do not know what has happened to the one Jesus? Jesus Christ how the the Jews and the priests have crucified him how he has died it's been three days now are you the only person who do not understand what is going on 
And as they were having this conversation, in verse 26, Jesus spoke to them and rebuked them. He said, you people, why are you of little faith? Can't you understand? Why haven't you already grasped the concept? And he said, was it not necessary for Christ to suffer these things and only then to enter his glory? So Jesus is speaking to the disciples and telling them it was appointed. It was necessary for him to go through the sufferings. And then after the sufferings, he enters into glory. Praise the name of the Lord. So as I was thinking about this, I thought about the greatness of Jesus purpose here on earth. His purpose was to come and redeem us. His purpose was to come and pay the price for us. His purpose was to come and set us free. But for us to be purchased and redeemed by him, he needed to go through suffering. He needed to go through the process of pain. He needed to go through the way of the cross. He needed to go through death. Ah, the, he died the death of a sinner, even if he did not know sin. But what kept him focused? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 12 that he looked up. He despised the shame of the cross because he was focused on the awaiting glory praise the name of the lord and so as we speak about wow. jesus and his suffering we see that jesus christ's suffering was necessary for him to fulfill his purpose and then now we come to us how about us how about us? Why do we have to go su through suffering? Why does suffering happen at times? Why do we experience uh, times where we are going through hardships, where we are going through troubles? Why do we go through this? And I want us to go to our Bibles in the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, I am going to read from verse 12. And I'm reading from Amplified Version. Romans chapter 8, from verse 12, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Uh, again, we are live, we are, we are doing this uh, service online. Uh, we have them who are joined in on the conference number. Uh, we have them who are on audio on the Facebook page. We have them uh, who are on uh, our live YouTube page and you also have the others who are watching through the website wherever you're watching from uh may the lord god bless you may the lord god empower you may the lord god give you the grace no matter what you're going through may the lord give you the grace as we share about this before the glory before the glory then there is suffering but how do we overcome from suffering to entering into the glory because we have seen that Jesus Christ had to suffer before he entered into his glory. What about us? Do we need to go through the suffering? Is it necessary for us to go through suffering? And when we go through suffering, how do we deal with it? What attitude should we adapt when we are going through sufferings? Romans 8 from verse 12 to 18. Uh, if you have it precious, can you read for us? Sure. Um, it says, Therefore, brethren, brethren, we are debtors not to flesh to live according to live but uh, to live according to the flesh. Um, you will die. Mm -hmm. But if by the to live according to the flesh, you, you will die. die. But mm -hmm. if but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body. You will live. Mm -hmm. Continue. Yeah, all the way to 18. Uh, for as many as we are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Mm -hmm. the, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Mm -hmm. And if children then have heirs mm -hmm. of God and joint heirs with Christ, mm -hmm. if indeed we suffer with him, 
that we may also be glorified together. Mm. For I consider that the, that the suffering of this pres present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen, amen. So then, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but not to our flesh. You know, when Jesus came and he did the work he did on the cross, the Bible says that, behold, we are a new creature. Once we ac accept Jesus, the old man is gone. The old man who was ruled by the flesh. And you know, the flesh desires things that are against the spirit. The flesh is prone to sin. And because of that, we have an, an obligation. Uh, not to our human nature. We have an obligation not to worldliness and not to our sinful capacity. We have an obligation to live according to the spirit of God. And the Bible says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So in as much as we are the sons of God, that does not uh, exempt, exempt us from suffering. And the Bible says that even in that a transition and translation from the sinful nature to now walking and being led by the spirit of God, the spirit of adoption in us cries, Abba, Father, we are able now to connect with God, not just as God, the creator of the universe, not just as God who, uh, who holds our life in his hands, who is, um, who is in charge of our existence, but we are able now to connect with the Lord in a level of calling him Father. The relationship is now more deeper. It is not just about God and, and his creation. It it is about God and his children. And the Bible says that we are the children of God. And if we are children, then we are heirs also. Heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ. Sharing his spiritual blessing and inheritance. We share his spiritual blessing. We share in his inheritance. So Jesus already paid the price. Ah, he adopted us we, we, by the blood. He redeemed us by the blood. And because of that, he purchased us for God. We belong to the Father. We are of the kingdom. But in as much as we are of the kingdom, we do not only share. And they want us to understand this. We do not only share his spiritual blessing and inheritance, but we also share in his suffering. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you Amen. know that when we got born again, it is not bliss. It is not a smooth sailing. We do not only share. And that is the problem that has hindered many. Because we think because we are children of God, then we should be exempt of share suffering. We should not even go through any hardship because we are the children of God. But I want you to understand that as, as it was necessary for Christ to suffer so that he may enter into his glory and he connected us with the Father, reconciled us with the Father and gave us a position. We are now children of God. We do not only share the spiritual blessing and inheritance but we also share in his suffering so that we may also share in his glory praise the name of the lord i say today i'm speaking about before the glory before the glory there is suffering and this is where the enemy has deceived many people you find that when suffering comes when you go through hardship if we do not uh, uh, understand this concept that it is not only sharing in the spiritual blessing and the inheritance but we are also partakers we share in his suffering too the enemy start whispering to you and preaching to you and telling you that god does not care and telling you that god has forgotten you and asking you question why should you go through this why should you be suffering but i want us to understand this so that when we understand it we will be equipped and we will have the capacity of developing the right 
attitude when we face challenges or when we go through trials or when we go through sufferings. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that for I considered, now this is Paul saying, in as much as he was anointed, in as much as he was preaching, he was also suffering for the sake of Christ. He was going through trials. He was going through challenges. He was going through tough times. But in as much as he was a, a, as an apostle of Christ and highly esteemed, this was his confession. And this should be our confession. He said in verse 18, for I consider this, amen. May we all consider this today. For I consider from the standpoint of faith. He stood from the standpoint of faith and said, this is my consideration. This is my opinion. This is my confidence that the suffering of the present life, the suffering of the present life, may it be sickness, may it be hardship, may it be uh, whatever it might be that you're going through. I want to assure you today that the suffering of the present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us. Praise the name of the Lord. Give me an amen if you are there. Uh, give me an amen. I don't want to feel like I'm just here speaking to myself. Amen. amen. The present suffering. Let me talk about even this time, the lockdown, the pandemic, uh, everything that is causing a lot of fear, a lot of sadness, a lot of pain. Even this present suffering. I want to assure you, brethren, that it is not worthy to be compared Praise the name of the Lord. You know, when you compare, it means that it is not even worthy. It, 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 we cannot even dignify the present suffering with, with a comparison, with the awaiting glory. I want you to know before the glory, yes, there is suffering. But what can keep us going is this assurance where we stand on the standpoint of faith and say, I am confident. I know, I believe that the present suffering, oh, the sufferings of the present life are not worthy to be compared with the glory. And I want you to mark this words with the glory that is about to. Praise the name of the Lord. And you hear it is about to. So it means that very soon, in the near future, there is a glory that is about to be revealed in us and to us. Praise the name of the Lord. So before the glory, in as much as we may go through suffering, we need to be able to address suffering from the standpoint of faith. Amen. From the standpoint of faith. Paul is speaking and saying, I know. Amen. Is the echo back again? I don't know what's happening today with our connection, but Jesus is Lord. We can be able to stand from the standpoint of faith and declare that the suffering of the no. present, uh, or the suffering of the present life cannot be compared with the awaiting glory. Tell your neighbor there is awaiting glory. And that awaiting glory is about to be revealed to us and in us praise the name of the lord and if you read romans chapter 5 we continue to speak about this uh we indeed i have said that christ suffered before entering into his glory and the suffering was necessary and point number two we have said we indeed share in his suffering as well as in the in the glory amen it's not just about the good good things we should also be able to share in his suffering amen and the suffering number three amen. i have said the suffering for those who are writing note the suffering of the current life cannot be compared to the awaiting glory and when we understand this we are able now to have an attitude an attitude to confront or to go through the suffering. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, Romans 5. Amen. Romans 5. I'm going to read from verse 2 to 4. Uh, Romans 5, 2 to 4. Let's have patience. Read for us that. Romans 5, 2 to 4. Five. Oh, 
Amen. 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 Uh, what is the attitude when we are going through suffering? You know, I read this and I'm like, wow. Huh? He's saying that we are supposed to rejoice in suffering. How do you rejoice in suffering? <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Huh? Let us rejoice Amen. in our hope and the confident assurance of experience experiencing and enjoying the glory of our God, the manifestation of his excellence and power. And not only this, but with joy. Amen. We are not only rejoicing in the hope and in the confidence and in the glory and in the manifestation of his excellent power. Hallelujah. We are not only rejoicing then, when we experience his healing power, when we experience his pro divine provision, when he, we experience him uh, victory in battles, no. But the same attitude is required of us. Praise the name of the Lord. He says, not only in this, but with joy, let us rejoice in our sufferings. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us rejoice in our sufferings. And rejoice in our hardships. Amen. Let us rejoice. Huh? Isn't that uh, going, be, uh, be, uh, going against every norm? Amen. That you are rejoicing in the suffering. You are not sad. You are not gloomy. You are not bitter. You are not angry with God. You are rejoicing in the suffering. You are rejoicing in your hardship. Amen. It is only by the grace of God that we can develop such an attitude. Hallelujah. Knowing. But what gives us that joy? In the times of pain, in the times of hardship, what gives us joy, what gives keep, keeps us rejoicing and having the right attitude is knowing. The knowledge you have, I want you to write this, the knowledge you have will determine the attitude you have in times of pain, in times of suffering. What do you know? The Amen. The knowledge you have. What you know. And this is the kind of knowledge that Job knew. And Job was so much assured. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. And I will see him in the land of the living. And this guy has gone through suffering. His, his, all his wealth is gone. All his children are gone. His body is full of souls and woods. And he says that he was saved only by the skin of his teeth. And you know very well that teeth does not have skin. Yet it was only his teeth that did not have sores. So his body was all broken and torn. His friends were looking at him, judging him and calling him uh, unrighteous and wicked. Why else would he go through what he was going through? The sufferings that he was going through. His wife stood and told him, just cast God and die. Because she looked at him and saw no future and saw no hope. But there is something that kept Job going. There is something that kept Job holding on. And it was the knowledge he had of his God. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. And I will see him in the land of the living. He didn't say when I die. No, in this land of the living. In this land where people are alive. I will still see my Redeemer because my Redeemer liveth. In the midst of the suffering, in the midst of hardship, before the glory, 
the knowledge you have will keep you going. All it will break you and you are not going to overcome. And that is why Paul is writing and saying, we do not only rejoice in the hope. We do not only rejoice in the glory. We do not only rejoice in the manifestation of his excellence and power. But we also rejoice in our suffering. We rejoice in our hardship. I know this is a tough message to preach at this time. This is something that many would say, how can we do this? How can it be? But the knowing, the knowledge, he said, knowing, knowing. And he said, knowing that hardship, distress, pressure, trouble, it produces patience, endurance. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Give amen. me an amen. Knowing what do you know in the current state as the world is suffering? What do you know? What knowledge do you have? I know that my Redeemer liveth. I know that my God is able. I know that he reigns over the, through, through, throughout the generation. I know he reigns over a vast dominion. I know he is all powerful. I know that he is well able. And because of what I know, then I can rejoice in the suffering because I know it will just take him a second and the suffering will end praise the name of the lord what do you know in the current suffering in times of trouble and then the bible says uh, we say the, we, the number four i said sub, rejoice in suffering uh is the attitude the attitude we need to adapt uh because we know and we have this confidence that the suffering will not be the end of us. But God uses that to shape us and to mold us. Hallelujah. And we have said, number five, suffering produces patience. Suffering produces patience. Amen. You go through tough time. You go through tough time. Uh, and then you are able to wait up upon the Lord. You're able to wait in his presence you are able uh, to endure hardship so suffering produces patience and endurance and this progresses and and it it it, it, it uh, materializes to a proven character or a spiritual maturity you know there are people when you pray and god does not show up you're like i'm not gonna pray again i will not even there's no need of prayer because i prayed and he didn't do it but there are people who will keep on praying whether he has done it or not because there is that patience that has been produced in the midst of hard, hard, hardship in the midst of trouble you have that patience endurance and before long it develops to spiritual maturity to the level where you know that god is not god because he is answering your prayer but he is god all by himself Praise the name of the Lord. To the level that the three uh, gentlemen, uh, the three men who were put in the fire, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you get to that level when they were told the fire will be added seven times. You know what they said? Said you add the fire or do whatever, but we have made a resolve. We are not going to bow down to any other God. We are not going to bow down to that idol. We are not going to do that because we know. Praise the name of the Lord. Again, that word of knowing. They said, we know. We know our God is able to deliver us from your hand and from that furnace. We know. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is where... Many of us know, Amen. but there is also another level. They say, we know, but listen, even if our God does not deliver us from this fire, we are not going to bow down. We are not going to bow down. We better die in the fire. If he chooses not to save us, we better die knowing we died in the faith. But we are not going to bow. But at the same time, they had the knowledge of their God. They knew he was able. But at the same time, they have gotten to the level of spiritual maturity. And they have matured in their faith enough to know that he is not only God when he is doing good things. He is glorified even when it is not in our favor. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Do we have somebody there? Amen. Amen. And let's let and, and the Bible says that this this confidence, this maturity, this this character that is developed uh translates to hope and confidence and it is a hope that does not disappoint. Praise the name of the Lord. Can we see something else in the book of Acts chapter 5 verse 41? Acts chapter 5 verse 41. Uh, Mickey, do you have it? Acts, Acts chapter. chapter 5 verse 41. Let's have Mickey read for us. Are you still there, Mickey? Yeah, Acts chapter 5, verse 41. What? Okay. Uh, and yeah, it says the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from the house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that it Jesus is the Christ. Amen. Amen. So we see another example. The disciples, uh, when before we where we have read, they had been taken by the Sanhedrin. They had been flogged. They had been whipped with many whips. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. But when they were released, Amen. the Bible says they left the council rejoicing. <laughs> Tell me about it. They left the council rejoicing. Grown men who had been flogged, whipped, and thrown into the prison. But when they left, instead of being bitter and angry, oh, we are here busy, oh, preaching the gospel, uh, telling people about Jesus, and this is how they repair us. And you know what they had done? They had healed somebody. Yeah? The man who was, uh, who was, uh, who was staying at the gate called beautiful they perform a miracle this guy is walking and rejoicing leaping and jumping and praising the lord but instead of them being treated as dignitaries and honored for that they are attacked beaten flogged and when they were released they left the council rejoicing and why are they rejoicing they are rejoicing that they have been considered worthy or dignified by indignity <laughs> to suffer shame for the sake of his name and where he has read he said they continued to preach they did not stop may the lord help us that even when we go through suffering it is not going to deter us from doing that which we have been called to do the disciples even after going through the suffering they did not get bitter they did not get angry they did not feel offended they rejoiced again that is brought about rejoicing in christ's suffering they rejoiced because they were counted worthy to be partakers of the suffering for his name amen and then i want us to know number seven uh, can uh, uh, so number six I say the disciples counted it an honor to share in Christ's sufferings so it was an honor it was not something to be angry about it was not something to be offended about it was not something to be bitter about they rejoiced and it did not deter them from doing what they were assigned to do they continued speaking and preaching Christ uh, I want us to read the next verse is in uh uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 26. 1 Corinthians 12, 26. 1 Corinthians 12, 26. Uh, precious, if you get it. First Corinthians 12, 26. Are you there? Anyone else? Anyone who is there? First Corinthians 12, 26. Whoever finds it, please read. 
finds it first can read. Yeah, first. First Corinthians. Twelve twenty six. Twelve twenty six. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Um, it says, mm -hmm. and and if one member suffers, all member suffers, all the members suffer with them. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with them. Amen. Amen. Now you are the body of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, we are we are the body of Christ, and if one member suffers, then we all suffer. If one member rejoices, then you all rejoice. So number seven, you are not alone in the sufferings. Praise the name of the Lord. And this also can be uh, confirmed from, um, uh, let me see. This was first Peter. Uh, let me see. But the Bible, uh, I think it's in First Peter, it says, But resist him, be firm in your faith, be firm in your faith against his attack, uh, rooted, established, immovable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters. Let me find that verse. Uh, 1 Peter 5, 9, that is it. 1 Peter 5, 9, it talks about resisting the enemy. Say, by resisting, we are resi resisting the devil and be firm in your faith against his attacks. Rooted and established and immovable. Knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. You do not suffer alone. So I want us to understand this other concept of before the glory, the suffering. Uh, as, as we have read uh, that in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, 26, that if one member suffers, all the other members suffer. If there is something the enemy uses in times of suffering, it's whispering to you that you are alone. You are the only one going through this. And making you feel like God hates you or nobody cares. But Paul is writing about this and saying, if one is suffering, all of us are suffering. When one of us is sick, then all of us should feel, and, and because we are the body, we feel the pain. And the Bible says that as we resist the devil, as we resist his attack, as we stand firm in our faith, we should have this knowledge that the same sufferings, are being experienced by your brothers and sisters all over the world. I want you to understand that whatever type of hardship you go through, it is not uncommon. You are not the only one. And if we can understand that, then the enemy will not have any ground to oppress us or to uh, to depress us and to give us those uh, those thoughts that are that, that make you feel pity for yourself and sorry for yourself and bitter and angry. No, when you understand that whatever you are going through, somebody else may have gone through the same. You are not alone in the suffering. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Give me an amen. And number eight. I want us to know that never forget that you once suffered. Praise the name of the Lord. In the midst of the sufferings, in the midst before the glory, and even when we translate, translate into the glory, never forget that you once suffered. Amen. And this is in Hebrews 10, 32 to 36. Hebrews 10, 32 to 36. Uh, patience, do you have it? Hebrews 10, 32 to 36. As we come to a close. Are we there? Hebrews 10, 32 to 36. Hebrews 10. 32 to 36. Yeah. Um, I recall the former days in which after you are illuminated, you endured a great struggle of suffering 
Partly while you were a spectacle brought by reproaches and tribulations, and partly while you were when you become companions of those who were so treated. So you had compassion on me in my chains and joyfully accepted the plundering of your goods, knowing that you have a better and an enjoying possession of for you our for yourself in heaven. Therefore, do not cast away your confidence which has great reward, for you have been, for you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Amen, amen. After you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Uh, if there is something else that the enemy uses is forgetting that you have ever suffered. So Paul is saying, remember the earlier days. After being spiritually enlightened, you patiently endured a great conflict of sufferings. Have you ever met somebody who forgets that they had once suffered? And when they forget, they act as if they don't know what it means to, be, to go through hardship. They don't know what it means to suffer. Huh? And Paul is reminding us and saying, sometimes you are being made a spectacle. Huh? Being publicly exposed to insults and distress. Maybe we have gone through that, uh, being exposed to, uh, to public uh, insults, uh, being made a spectacle, being in distress. And he is saying, and sometimes you suffered because of becoming companions of those who are so treated. Maybe somebody who is of your family in faith is going through that. And because of that, you also suffer because you are a companion, your parent parcel of each other suffering. So Paul is saying, do not forget, do not forget. Even if you've passed from the suffering and entered into the glory, do not forget even about those that uh, were imprisoned, about uh, the seizure of your belongings, confiscation of your property, huh? all that, whatever kind of suffering, he is saying, do not forget. It is good to remember. And that is what made the children of Israel keep sinning before God. Because after a time they forgot, they kept forgetting the things that God had done for them. They kept forgetting that the Lord had taken them from captivity. They kept forgetting that they were slaves. They kept forgetting even the great miracles, the provision of manna, the provision of water from a rock, the dividing of the Red Sea. They forgot. And every time they forgot. They did that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. And it is the same way with us. Before the glory, it is important to remember. Even at this time, it is important to remember. Was there a time that you didn't even have food to eat? Amen. Is there a time that you didn't know where your next meal is coming from? You know, when you remember, you will be able to help others. You will be able to be a companion to others who are going through suffering. But when you forget, you act as if it is all by your grace. It is all by your power. It is because you have so much knowledge. It is because you know how to plan yourself and you have financial capacity. When we forget, it is dangerous. Praise the name of the Lord. So Paul is saying, and that is the last, uh, last point I am going to conclude with this sermon as we talk about before the glory. Do not forget that you once suffered. And when you remember, you patiently endure. You patiently endure without compromising. You do not compromise yourself. You do not compromise your faith. If you remember, praise the name of the Lord. You do not allow pride to creep in. If you remember. And so that we may continue to carry out the will of God so that we may receive and enjoy to the fullest what is promised so that we may be able to enter into glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to ask Minister Samsov, give us one worship chorus as we go before the Lord and pray that we are going to develop this attitude, the attitude of rejoicing, even in the midst of suffering, that we are going to hold firm our confidence and our knowledge uh, from the standpoint of faith. We can boldly declare that we know for sure that the current suffering is not worthy to be compared with the awaiting glory. When Jesus Jesus went on that cross. The Bible says he despised the cross because he knew the awaiting glory. He knew what glory awaited for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm. We give you all the glory. We give you honor, we give you all the glory, we give you honor, we give you all the glory, we give you honor, we give you all the glory, we give you honor. We give you all honor. Mm. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise, Praise God, amen. Praise God, Praise God hallelujah. Praise God, amen. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all Oh, no. oh yes, Lord. We give you all we... the glory. Mm -hmm. we, we give, give you all the Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise God. God. We give you all the glory, Lord. Jesus. We give you all the honor, Jehovah. We yes, thank Lord. you, Lord, because there is a promise, a promise of glory, oh God. Before the glory, as we go through the hardship, the suffering, we declare this morning, dear Father, that we are going to develop the right attitude in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you because we can boldly declare and stand from the standpoint of faith and declare that we know that the current Current suffering cannot be compared with the awaiting glory that is about to be revealed in us and to us, Jehovah God. We cast away and uproot every root of bitterness, every anger, oh Lord, every bitterness, every anger. We uproot it from our hearts in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone who has listened to this message, dear Father, and maybe they are in the season of hardship. They are in the season of hardship and suffering. We declare in Jesus' name that the suffering, dear Lord, will not deter them from serving your purposes and from dri and drift them from the will of God. But Lord, they shall be made more powerful, more mature. Their character shall develop in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We declare in Jesus' name that we can get to the level of rejoicing like your disciples rejoiced when they had suffered. They rejoiced and counted a blessing. Oh, because they suffered for your name's sake, dear Lord. Oh, we pray that we may have this confidence, Lord. The confidence that the three men had. That God, you are able to deliver them and if not they will not bow down they will not move from their faith we declare in Jesus name none of us shall fall into compromise in the mighty name of Jesus none of us shall drift from your will in the name of Jesus Christ in the midst of everything we shall hold fast to our confession of faith we shall hold fast to what we believe just like Job continued professing and saying I know my redeemer liveth we declare today in the name of Jesus that we know that you are able. Our Father, you are able. Even in the midst of the current hardship, dear Lord, we know that you are able. We know that you are all powerful. We know that you are doing something great and mighty that will make the nations shake and tremble in your presence.
presence, dear Father. And because of this, we declare that we will rejoice. We will rejoice. We declare that in the midst of everything, the enemy will not steal our joy. We know that when suffering comes, all oh, our joy is taken away. But today, in the name of Jesus, we declare that the enemy will not take away our joy. For the joy of the Lord is our strength. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, for each and every one of us who may be going through suffering dear father that you give us the grace to overcome grace to overcome hopelessness is not our portion depression is not our portion in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus we declare that the glory is about to be revealed the glory is about to be manifested the glory is about to be revealed in the name of Jesus Christ oh the current suffering we declare even this pandemic of coronavirus you are not worthy you are not worthy to be compared with the awaiting glory with the glory that is about to be revealed the glory that is about to be revealed in the church the glory that is about to be revealed in the world in the name of Jesus and we stand on the standpoint of faith and rejoice oh God because father you are in control father you are in control we give you glory we give you honor in Jesus name we pray and let everybody say amen 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 oh yes there is a glory that is about to be revealed and we shall see it we will continue rejoicing so if you have been feeling sad if you have been feeling like you're going out of your mind in the midst of the lockdown i urge you to start changing your attitude now and start rejoicing rejoice 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 in the midst of it because we know that the lord is in control the lord is in control and he is at work and he is going to manifest himself for his glory hallelujah amen amen may the lord god bless you thank you all who have logged in as usual we say that as even as we continue to worship online we are also giving our givings online as you know that the bills are still waiting uh in as much as we're not meeting in the church the bills are still waiting so please let's give our offerings uh let's give our offerings we have the cash up number the church cash up number uh is 978332 2700 again the number is 9783322700 please let's give our offerings and our tithes uh again uh if you want to give in the website you can go to the uh, church website is www. Uh, gloriouspowerchurch.org you can give in uh through the website you can also give through the church uh, center app we have our app the church center app glorious power church and you can give your offerings uh through the app we have many ways to give uh you can also give through paypal uh it is glorious power church uh, paypal uh you can be able to give so let's continue doing what we need to do because the lord is in control the lord is in charge may the lord god bless you i am excited to announce that yesterday we, we resumed our teens and twin services we are doing them uh virtually through the um, conference line and yesterday we had 11 kids joining and we had a good time catching up and uh picking up uh from where we left and we'll continue doing that uh so next saturday the teens and twins we are there uh logging the same number uh from 11 we said we are going to extend we usually we meet at 10 but we are going to be doing it from 11 because i know some people as uh if uh as are, are sleeping late and maybe getting up early uh uh, uh some kids are not able to get up early after they sleep so late so by 11 uh parents please by 11 on saturday make sure that your kids are up and ready with your bibles with your notebook with your packages we have packages we are using the church app uh for interaction 
and the Lord is going to continue empowering us and blessing us for his glory. Our Tuesday prayer line conferences continue. We meet here Tuesday from 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. We continue in prayer. We continue rejoicing in the Lord because he is in control. Hallelujah. The Lord is in control. Let's continue praying for one another. Let's continue declaring healing upon the world, healing upon those who are sick, and even those that have already lost their loved ones and they cannot even even be able to have the closure of traveling and attending the funeral or maybe even here they cannot be able to do it let's pray that the lord comfort is going to uh fill uh fill them up and comfort them at such times amen uh have i left any other announcements before we share the words of grace anyone Amen. 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 I pray for you that the Lord is going to bless you. You're going out. You're coming in. You are blessed and highly favored. You're protected divinely by his divine protection. It is well. It is well. It is well with us. Hallelujah. It is well. It is well with us. Amen. Amen. Can we share the words of grace if there is nothing? Uh, I have, I don't think I've left anything. All right. And now may the grace. And now may the grace. And forevermore. Amen. Amen. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. May the Lord God bless you. Amen. Amen. May the Lord God bless you. Uh, remember to share. Uh, <laughs> what's going on <laughs> amen you, you're memorizing psalms 121 amen may the lord god bless you may the lord keep you a uh, shalom shalom let's meet again here on tuesday and uh, teens and twins let's meet here on saturday shalom shalom remember to share the broadcast uh if it's on youtube uh and also in our page remember to share god bless you god bless you Bye. Bye. Love you. Happy Easter. Happy Sunday Easter. Uh, happy Easter. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, you're off? Just a minute.